Hi, this is Mr. Kaplow, and I'm just going to show you a couple of basic introductory uh, tips uh, and tutorials on running Logger Pro and how to use it. Uh, in this case, you can see the Logger Pro window is already open. There's a button in the top right hand corner, and you can toggle that button to show and hide the icons for some quite commonly used features of Logger Pro. You'll see that the graph is kind of the main screen here. I've highlighted it now and then uh, the data set over here on the left. This table becomes integral, especially if you're going to be entering data in manually, which was uh, what I want to do right now. Uh, a lot of times we'll be using the Vernier Proware to collect data into the Logger Pro, but in this case I'm going to do it manually, uh, just like an Excel spreadsheet if I had collected some data in the lab and I wanted to uh, kind of visualize that data through a graph or otherwise. In this case I'm going to go ahead and just put some bogus numbers in, 2, uh, 4, 6, and 8 for my x values, and 5, 10, 15, and 20 for my y column. Now you can see that those points go ahead, they are um, placed into the uh, graph. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to basically uh, double click on the X column. It allows me to adjust the name and the units of my X axis. In this case, I'll just go ahead and call that time. Uh, some commonly units for time in this case would be seconds. Uh, most of the time, the data type will be numeric. You could change that in some instances, but I don't see that happening very often. I'm going to go ahead and click done. You notice that it, go, it, it went ahead and change that on my x-axis label. I'm going to do the same thing for the y-axis quickly. Let's just go ahead and pretend that this is a velocity versus time curve. Velocity. And my units will be in meters per second. I'm going to go ahead and click done. I've got a velocity versus time graph now. Uh, a couple of other things I can uh, play with the y-axis. Notice that when my cursor hovers over the y-axis, it changes from this crosshair which has other uh, features associated with it, um, to this kind of squiggly line icon. If I click and drag, I can change the scale on my y-axis. Notice that it changes a little bit on the, uh, if I do it down here at the bottom, it actually moves the y-axis. So it depends on where you've grabbed it from, uh, will affect how it manipulates the axis. I'm going to do the same thing here with the x-axis, just to show you that it can be done. I've effectively changed the y and the x-axis now. I could go back. Um, this uh, A scale icon here at the top uh, is an auto scale graph. So if I click on that, it brings back, it kind of maximizes your view uh, and scales the x and y axis accordingly. Uh, you can zoom in and out. So in this case, I've zoomed out one click, two clicks, etc. I can, uh, of course, also zoom in and go back to auto scale. Okay, so here's my graph. Uh, some things I might want to do with it. Let's go ahead and highlight. I'm just drawing a box around the four data points. Notice that now that I've done that, it's highlighted those data points over in the data set as well. Every time I manipulate something over here in the graph element, it um, corresponds to the data points over here in the table. I'm going to go ahead and uh, under the analyze um, feature here, I can choose a fit. It looks linear, so I'm going to choose a linear fit here, and it is done exactly that. It tells me my standard form, y equals mx plus b. I've got a slope for that, a y-intercept, and um, my correlation. I can play with this. I can move this around um, if I want to. Notice that there, there are these brackets um, on the left hand side and the right hand side. I can now, if I hover over that, I can move this in or out and effectively deselect this last data point. So now I'm looking at a smaller data set than I was originally. Or I can change just by drawing a box around that. Okay, um, some other features here. I can insert um, text, which inserts a text box or a text annotation. The text annotation here, you can see that um, just filled in over here on the left. I can say, you know, something happened here. So if I wanted to um, highlight a specific, oops, turns to the hand. I can now move it somewhere else. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the leader line here. So I've grabbed it and I'm going to point to a certain spot on the graph that I want to draw the user's attention to. So I can use text or text annotation for that. I'm going to go ahead and remove the linear fit for right now and go back and look at our data. Some other things I can do is I can uh, right click 
uh, and choose graph options. I can get here a bunch of different ways, but I'm going to give my graph a title. In this case, velocity versus time might be appropriate. I can change some of the other axes, um, just how it looks, what the labels are, etc., etc. I'll click OK. You can see that the velocity versus time title appears here now. I can also change kind of colors. Uh, if I take a look at, uh, I'm going to right click here and choose, oh sorry, I should be doing that at the um, header here. I can change the color, um, sure, pansy is a great color, and I'll click OK, and it's going to change the color of that those particular data points. I can change it from red to pumpkin. And there we go. So if you had a lot of data going on here, that might be appropriate. The last thing I want to show you how to do is to add a calculated column to your data set. So far we only have velocity and time. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and expand the table. In this case I've accidentally grabbed the graph and moved it to the right. I'm going to go ahead and expand the um, data table and under data I'm going to choose new calculated column. I can give the calculated column a name. Uh, in this case, I'll call it uh, acceleration. And I'm going to give it units of meters per second per second. It's this, uh, in this section, it's asking me for uh, an equation. So in this equation field, I have some options. The first thing I need to do is define a variable. So I'm basically going to say, I want to take your velocity. So notice that I think it's important to choose it from this drop-down list instead of typing it in because the syntax requires so you have some quotes here. That's how Logger Pro is set up. And I'm going to choose um, delta or the change in velocity. So I should have done, I did that backwards here. Notice that I've got the uh, open parentheses and now I have to add the closed parentheses here. So I have delta velocity and um, some of the uh, functions is uh, one thing I can put in is this divided by sign. I could use an asterisk for multiplication, an addition sign uh, if needed, etc. So delta velocity divided by delta time. I'm going to go ahead and add that delta and insert the variable time. So my acceleration is delta v over delta t, and that's done. I've added now a calculated column. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click on that again because the short name I left as CC for calculated column. So I'll give it an abbreviation of Excel. So now I've got acceleration in meters per second per second. The acceleration is th basically the slope of that velocity versus time graph. So it's constant at 2.5 meters per second per second. And that's it.